we have a vegetable and flower farm here in Kelowna, BC, Canada, and mid-September represents the nearing the end of the season for the flowers. As the cooler weather and the end of many, many hot months rolls in for us, the flowers really start to decline, but we still have lots. So today I'm gonna to share everything that is still going in the flower farm and also some of the ways that we're working to extend our season as late as possible. Last night, the weather got down to one degree overnight. I was not expecting that. That is almost freezing. And when I came outside, I really expected all of my beautiful flowers to have gotten frosted and killed. Luckily, <laughs> we, we lucked out. No, no patches of frost here on our farm, but that really means it's it's time you know it's it's that time of year when any night i could go to bed and i can wake up and it can all be gone but despite that we are still picking out lots and lots of flowers every week we still have the ability to make you know a good 30 30 or more bouquets every single week so there is no shortage of flowers we still have lots of successions of sunflowers that are blooming and more coming. I planted so many sunflowers so that if the weather was nice that I would have them available till the very latest. There is lots going on in the farm so I'm gonna start by showing you one of our perennial areas and how it has changed over the course of the season. Up here is one of our new gardens that got planted just this spring. This entire area is mostly perennials and I was really impressed with how well it produced in its first year. Every year it's gonna produce more and more but we still got plenty of harvest out of it. This patch here was one of our first picks, all filled with yarrow. At this point, it's not doing anything. It's just getting ready to go dormant and provide me lots of flowers next spring. And then over on the other side, I had all of this greenery, all these beautiful uh, perennial greeneries like mints, and I have some tarragon and a variety of things. And we have picked and picked and picked. It has been an amazing production. But the thing I really wanted to share with you is this bed here. This is an entire bed of sedum. And I'm very excited about this because this, the plan all along for this was I will have late fall, you know, filler or flowers in these sedums here. This is, you know, fairly frost tolerant. So even if the frost comes and it kills off everything in my garden, I will still have lots to pick in these sedums. And I think they're looking absolutely gorgeous. The rest of the perennials here are pretty much fading out. This was a beautiful perennial sunflower that we got amazing production off of. You know, maybe there's a few stems in there, but you know, these, this had Shasta daisies, this had some uh, sea holly, my liatris, my lilies, all of this is just 
not really doing anything. It was incredibly abundant in the summer. Um, and you know, now it's, it's just waiting and it will be there again next year. That's one of the incredible things about perennials. They just flower every year. Um, but we still have lots right down here in our annual, one of our annual flower farm sections. This started producing in June and this will go until the frost comes and kills it. This, this is an incredible amount of production that we get out of just this thousand square foot space. One of the biggest production items that we have in this section is our zinnias. Two of the five beds in here are just zinnias and I think we have about a thousand plants in total. These zinnias, they love the heat. They love our warm, dry summers and they produce and they produce and produce. We've started to have cooler nights. You know, the zinnias after a long, hard summer are getting some disease into them. The production just isn't what it used to be, but as you can see behind me, there's still so much in there. There's, come September, our sales on the farm get slower, so we really don't mind that our zinnia production also gets slower because we just are selling less flowers. It works perfectly with our workflow. Another big producer in this section is our Cosmos. Cosmos, yet again, they produce and produce. They love the heat, they deal with our dry weather. But at this point, they're really slowing down. They're starting to get some disease in there. So not all of the plants are really producing anymore. But despite that, there's still so much. It's, you know, it's so incredible how much comes out of this single bed of plants. This has about 250 plants in it and it produces buckets and buckets of stems for me every single week. So this, you know, it deserves its rest because it is such a workhorse. And then on the other side here, we have our celosia and it's not looking super abundant, uh, super colorful and super full because this we have also been picking off of for at least six weeks now. And so it, you know, at this point, it's not gonna produce any more for me, but there is lots in here for me to keep picking off of over the next couple of weeks until the plants finally die with our frost. And this, I'm so excited about this. This is one of our new experiments this year. These are the big African marigolds and I love these. And they have really been loving the cooler nights, the production on these. And you know, there's something, there's something about the texture of these marigolds for me. I just absolutely love them in bouquets and customers seem to love them too because they've been selling really well. Which should be one of our biggest showstoppers in the fall garden are our dahlias. Uh, you know, dahlias so beautiful. How could you not want to grow a million of them? Um, you know, I just really struggle with dahlias. As you can see, there's not really much going on here in this bed. There's a lot of, you know, diseased looking type foliage on my plants. I think that I have too many grasshoppers, <laughs> which are voracious spreaders of just nasty, nasty disease. Uh, and that I just don't water enough with our hot, dry conditions that we have in our specific area for the dahlias to really thrive for me. So even though they are still producing something, even though they are still, you know, beautiful and having blooms, um, you know, I wish what I could show you here, this, you know, this is almost 200 dahlia plants that I'm standing in front of. And I wish I could show you just this explosion of beauty, especially because the dahlias love these cool fall evenings and nights. But, you know, maybe, maybe I'm just not. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not well suited to dahlia growing because these really should look better. Behind me is this large empty section and this, this was not empty. This we have stripped out. This was where I had, you know, tons and tons of amaranth. It didn't grow as well as I had hoped. It stayed quite short, but the plan all along was to fill this in with amaranths that I would then pick and dry to have an abundance of them to work with you know in the off off season in the not fresh season and so this has all gotten cleaned out and it's hanging up in my outbuilding where i have all of my other dried flowers so let's go show you guys that and here is all my amaranth 
hung up drying behind me, but I have a lot more than amaranth in here. We have been drying stuff like crazy. You know, I got some of my brown amaranths, this over here, which smells amazing. I wish I had smell vision to share with you guys. Everyone who walks into the outbuilding just, just is like, oh, what's that smell? This is Sweet Annie, which has been a fun experiment. You know, this is gonna be a great, a great dried filler. You know, just lots and lots of stuff. Does this look good? This is another area of our farm that we have been really excited about this year. We opened up all of the space down here. This was all brand new space for us this year. And we didn't really have anything specific planned for it. So we filled it with flowers. <laughs> and I am so glad that we did because we have had a lot of really incredible successes down here this year. And it's part of the reason why we still are having really good production at this point. This is still pumping out a ton of plants for us. The zinnias that I already showed you guys up in our annual garden beds are mostly planted by color. They're all in color blocks so that it's really easy for me to pick single colors into a bucket for when I'm working and doing designs. Here behind me is a mix of zinnias. This uh, was direct seeded a little bit later than the other stuff up at the farm and you know it was just supposed to be there for extras for us to play with and because it was a little bit later because it was direct seeded it is now still producing an incredible amount of zinnias it hasn't it hasn't been in the ground so long that it's gotten diseased so all it is fighting right now is the cool nights which means it is still producing like crazy for me and I'm so glad to have it. These, you know, how, how can you not love zinnias? I want to put a million zinnias into every single bouquet that I make and having this allows me to do that. This was my snapdragon bed here behind me. This I planted in the late spring and it gave us so much production, more production than we knew what to do with. So a lot of the flowers just got left here and we basically have been ignoring it. Snapdragons, they don't really love our hot summers, so it hasn't been doing much. But now that we have cooler weather, you know, these like shorter days, it's, it's starting to bloom again. And there's some really incredible stuff in here. Look at all of these. This little section behind me is doing some of the absolute best production of the Snapdragons in this bed. This bed is actually, you know, a mix of different things. And when I was thinking back to, you know, cause I'm trying to figure out why are some of these doing so well? And I had a single random pack of Potomac Snapdragons, which is, you know, it's a common variety that flower farmers grow. Um, and this, this is it. This is the Potomacs. It is incredible how good its second flush of stems are. Um, a, a lot of the other ones behind me are rocket snapdragons um, because I had a pack of the bronze. I love the color and I love rocket too. But these Potomacs, incredible, incredible production because I've already picked, you know, a whole flush of beautiful stems and for it to do the second one has me really impressed and, you know, leaning more towards doing that as the only variety in future years. Another new experiment on the farm for us this year is status. Um, I, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, I don't know why we didn't grow this before, but this is our first year growing status and we have been so happy with this plant. We are gonna be doing a lot more of this because it is so versatile in the bouquets as well as drying so beautifully. Um, but yeah, just incredible, incredible pr production still, despite having these cooler evenings, it really hasn't slowed down, which has me very happy because I always need stuff that goes all year long. One of my favorite plants to grow and essential, essential plant on a flower farm in the fall is amaranth. Here behind me, I have classic, classic love lies bleeding. I have coral fountain. Uh, I'm pretty sure the green one was called dreadlocks, something like that. Swing that one around, it's massive. Yeah, look at, look at this big guy. <laughs> You're so fun. I, I love amaranth. I find it so fun to work with and it has some really incredible colors. As, as much as I love 
these drapey ones, you know, and, the, and these are the classic, these are the ones people stick in the wedding bouquets, you know, very fancy, very formal. My favorite, and especially for fall, are these ones over here. We had a big rain, so it's gotten a little bit flattened, but these are my favorite amaranths, these spike style amaranths. And especially in the fall, you know, as you can see, this, you know, this amaranth itself basically inspires a lot of my fall palettes for my bouquets. You know, this rich, rich, dark color. People love this in the fall. And behind me, Hot Biscuit. This is Velvet Curtain. This is Hot Biscuit in the brown. The brown blends so nicely in those fall, fall color palettes. You know, doing the Hot Biscuit with sunflowers. I love it. And they are so productive. You get so many, <laughs> so many usable stems out of amaranth and it's so easy to grow. If you haven't tried it, trust me, you, you guys, you gotta grow this. This is incredible, like incredible plants. I'm sure you'll love it as much as I do. Behind me is a whole big patch of nothing. So you're probably wondering why I'm showing this to you. And the reason is this represents how well I've done with sunflowers this year. I am really happy with what we've done with sunflowers. This is where our first sunflowers came out of, but I still have lots more. These are my last succession of sunflowers. The ones I was showing you is my first. I have done seven plantings of sunflowers. Every two weeks, I put a new bed of sunflowers into the ground. And so far that has mean I haven't had a single day when I couldn't come outside and pick a bunch of sunflowers. My plan was to plant sunflowers so that I had them, you know, in case the weather is great until the end of October. We normally get our first frost here in, you know, early October to mid October. And we're sitting at mid September and I'm feeling like it could come a lot earlier this year. It's been weird weather this year, but having these in, in the ground, this is, you know, this is like insurance that if the weather's nice, I'll still have something to sell. Sunflowers are an incredible crop for us. We can sell them on their own. They blend so well into bouquets. There's so much that we can do with them. So the fact that I've always had them coming has me really happy and, you know, hoping to replicate this in future years, you know, and I mean, how could you not just love, you know, basically having a mini, a mini field of sunflowers. They're, they're so beautiful. Being in a zone five, our season just isn't really that long. Our first blooms kind of happen in June, you know, maybe May with some of those spring bulbs. Uh, and then, you know, as I was saying, you know, this entire farm tour is about how this is kind of the last bang, you know, mid September, you know, we only have a few more weeks left of fresh flowers. So I am really excited about the experiments that we've been running with all the dried flowers and all the things that we can do with them, because being able to have local, you know, grown on farm flowers year round is something that I think would be really incredible to offer, you know, and dried flowers are my way of doing that, right? So I am very happy to have all the stuff hanging behind me, to have all the things that I've dried, and I have boxes and boxes and boxes to work with. There is going to be, you know, a lot of flower magic that can keep happening here, you know, even as we fade into those winter months. And, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see what we're gonna do with it all. Ian, talk about your feelings well, about I, the I, end of the flower season. I don't really have feelings. Well, yeah, you do. 